you want this, even though it's not in the Bible, even though God clearly says no to this, hey, it's okay. God loves you anyways. He's going to accept you no matter what. God is loving. He is filled with grace and forgiveness. But also, when God comes back, there is going to be a line drawn in the sand. All right, guys, what's going on? Progressive Christianity and the dangers thereof. That's what we're talking about today. It's going to be very serious. <laughs> As you can tell, he's got a serious look on. That hurt? Oh, it was a fake mustache. What's going on, you guys? I'm Paul. I'm Morgan. I'm Michael. This is the, the Paul, Paul and Morgan, Morgan, the Paul and Morgan, Morgan show. show. So today's video, we're talking about the problems that we see with progressive Christianity. It seems like it's been really kind of in our faces recently. And I'm not saying that in a mean way, but it just feels like it's been a, a big topic of conversation. Yes, it has. We, um, <laughs> well, let me, uh, it has been been problematic. We've had a good amount of people reach out to us and say, guys, can you talk about progressive Christianity? We've been seeing quite a push for it, even here on the YouTube platform. And even on our Instagrams, we've been posting a little bit of stuff, kind of pushing back on progressive Christianity. And we've had some hate for doing that. So we thought, let's go and make a video about it. And who better to have with us than the man, the myth, the legend. Bum -ba -bum -ba -bum -ba no introduction needed. We were thinking like, yeah, Morgan and I want to do this topic, but we'd also like having someone who just knows the word of God really well and can bring some good insights. And Michael's the man for that. If you guys are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe. We make Christian advice videos on life, love, and dating to help you have hope and be free. And also go subscribe to Michael, you guys. He's got a channel where he actually really hits on the social topics and does an awesome job with that. We'll link his stuff below. Let's get to it. Can I just start by saying we need to have heart postures that say, God, we desire to live for you and not for ourselves. And I think a good part, a good slug of the Christian progressive movement is how can I satisfy my emotions, my flesh, my wants and desires, I don't like being told no, and then still fit that idea into some type of Christian bubble that says, but I still love Jesus. And I'm still gonna get to heaven when I die. It says in 2 Timothy 4, 3, for the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers, teachers, to say what their itching ears want to hear. And when I hear that, you all, it is, it's just, it's, it's scary and it's sobering because oftentimes what happens when the Holy Spirit comes, it talks about in the Bible that it will convict the world in regards to its sin. And people don't like to be convicted. We don't like to be told what to do. It's just like growing up as a kid with your parents. There were certain things that you wanted to do as a kid and your parents said, no, you can't do this. And in your mind, you were thinking, this doesn't make sense. Why would they prevent me from doing something that I think will be a lot of fun and satisfying. But your parents, in their wisdom, they understood what would ultimately cause damage in your life. Similarly to the Bible, God is infinite in his wisdom and understanding. So when he says in the Bible that committing adultery and sexual immorality, when he lays out a very specific mandate in scripture, it's not ambiguous whatsoever. He does it for our good. In progressivism, what it wants to do is it wants to substitute God's law, his truth is explicitly written in the Bible to essentially what makes myself feel good. Why would God who loves me prevent me from doing something that I really enjoy that satisfies me? Michael, I'm glad you mentioned, you know, the sexual immorality aspect, because I do think that is one of the issues that's on the forefront here. When I see someone saying I'm a very big advocate for progressive Christianity, what I see pretty quickly after that is the person is living a lifestyle that the Bible would call sexual immorality. They're saying, God told me that this is okay, or they may be saying that the Bible is outdated in this area. I've heard that. First Thessalonians 4, 3 through 5. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God. If you know God and you're submitting to him, you're going to abstain from sexual immorality. You're going to repent if you fall. But when you're saying, I can be sexually deviant from what the word says, and I still love God, and I'm still living for God, it doesn't line up. What fellowship does light have with darkness? Can fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring, it says in James. It doesn't line up. There are verse after verse after verse that make 
clear what sexual immorality is. And it says in the Bible that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The Bible's not outdated. The Word of God, it doesn't change from season to season. And it makes us uncomfortable at times. It really does. But that's a good thing because yeah. it draws us closer to who He is. And one of the sobering thoughts is, you all, as you were talking about just sexual morality and hardening yourself to God and His truth, is the first chapter of Romans. And you all, we can try to like mince words here. Jesus Christ does not mince words. He loves you, but he wants to transform you. The woman who was caught in adultery, he said, I'm not condemning you, but leave your life of sin. Go and sin no more. He loved her to the point of wanting to change the direction of her life. Jesus will meet you even in the midst of sin and immorality. But the beautiful thing about Jesus is his spirit transforms. It says in the first chapter of Romans that if you essentially continue to harden yourself to God's laws and his truth, and this is serious, guys. This is from the word of God, that he will give you over to that. You'll become numb to even understanding what the truth is because you've hardened yourself so much. But this is in the Bible, and it's sobering to think about that. The wording that Paul uses is God abandons you to your sin. I don't know about you, but the thought of God abandoning me to my sin is terrifying. <laughs> Guys, the reason we keep bringing up sexual immorality and, and people are always like, why do you only focus on this? Or why are you only talking about sexual immorality when there's so many other sins in the Bible? It's very true. I think one of the main reasons we're talking specifically on this is because it is so, it's such a hot topic right now. It is such a common thing you see everywhere. It is one of the biggest things progressive Christians are promoting and saying that it's okay to live in this sin of sexual immorality. And we're here to say the Bible does not say that that's okay. So why are Christians, why are people who are claiming to be Christians saying that it's okay? And Morgan, I think she's, she's touching on a really important part, but look no further than the Old Testament. Look at the people of God, the Israelites. They were ultimately put into exile, both the Northern Kingdom and the Southern Kingdom, Israel and Judah. One of the main reasons they were cast out was due to the sexual immorality that was being exalted in their land. God had told them, he had given them the law. He had told them very explicitly how to conduct their lives. And they rejected that. And God was mercifully continued to give them opportunities, but ultimately they continued to, to practice and engage in sexual immoral conduct. And he gave them prophets to warn them to stop, repent, turn. Yeah. I think the idea of progressive Christianity is so appealing and so warm and fuzzy at first because there is no conviction, there is no condemnation, there is total acceptance of your sin. Oh, you want this? Even though it's not in the Bible, even though God clearly says no to this, hey, it's okay. God loves you anyways. He's going to accept you no matter what. God is loving. He is beautiful. He is kind. He is forgiving. He is filled with grace and forgiveness. But also, he makes it very clear. If you read the book of Revelations, when God comes back, there is going to be a line drawn in the sand. And accepting your sin as a full-on lifestyle is one of those things that's going to put you in the not good side of the sand. We just need to have a level of sobriety here, you all. Like, Morgan's not trying to fear you into accepting Christ. She's trying to instill, like, a level of sobriety and seriousness of the situation we're in right now. Jesus came to give us life and life abundantly. He came to deliver us. He came to set us free. If you just said, I've come to set the captives free. To, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. We don't have to live in sexual sin, okay? There is freedom. And the three of us sitting here right now, we are not coming at you like saying that we're perfect. We have it all figured out. We have all three struggled with sin in our life. We are all three working through things in our life. I personally am working through sin in my life, giving it to the Lord and saying, God, just flush it out of me, rip it out of me, do what you have to do to make me holy, to bring me closer to you. We're not coming to you thinking we're better than these progressive Christians. We're not coming to you in that way. And I really hope that it does not come off that way. I'm sure it will to some people, but that's okay. The freedom in Christ is so beautiful. And we just want to see everyone walking in that power, in that freedom. And the lie that progressive Christianity is freedom, it's sad. I think one of the big reasons that progressive Christianity is growing so big is a lack of knowledge and submission to the word of God 
And I would encourage you guys, if you find yourselves like, I don't know what I believe, maybe progressive Christianity, maybe these things being told to me by culture or even people around me, even some churches, it sounds good, but I'm just not really sure. Be diving in the word of God because the word of God is living and active. The spirit of God is on it and the Holy Spirit will meet you in there if you are seeking the Lord with a pure heart. It will lead you to truth. Even right now, if you're believing something that's not true, if you're in your heart asking, wanting, crying out for truth, Jesus will guide you into all truth. His anointing will teach you all things. It really is about a posture of your heart. As Morgan was saying, I don't have everything figured out. Am I continuing to work my faith out with fear and trembling? Absolutely. What God has given us is a desire just to know what the truth is. And if your desire is to know what the truth is, as Paul was saying, the word of God, his Holy Spirit will lead you and will expose what's a lie and what's not. There are teachers and people and influencers now and there will continue to be people rise up who are going to quote scripture, who are going to sound really kind and sweet and sincere, and they're going to pour out their hearts right in front of you, and they're gonna say things that sound so good, sound so right, but when you look at the word, the Bible, and you line up, you really do your research, and you line up what they're saying with the Bible, it doesn't line up, it doesn't add up, it does not make sense, and it's up to you to what you accept, to what you choose to follow. You can choose to follow them, but they are taking you down a very dangerous path. Or you can choose to follow the word where life is not easy being a Christian. It's not easy. It was never promised to be easy. But what was promised it was this never ending joy in any circumstance you are in. In the end of this life, we have something so much better promised to us than any joy or happiness that this world could bring you. Preach it, Sister Morgan! Guys, we open it up in the comment section. We'd love to continue the discussion. Comment below, let us know what you thought of this video and your thoughts on this topic. Give this video a thumbs up if you were happy to see Mike back on the channel. What's up, what's up, what's up? Guys, we're linking Michael's channel below. He dives honestly really deep into these type of issues and does an awesome job. Highly recommend him. Highly. Highly. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day. We will catch you again very soon. Have hope. Be, Be free! free. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! Oh! <laughs>